Hello and welcome to Frampton Unplugged, The Future of Everything, Episode 6. So today is all going to be about blockchain. Um, I've avoided it till now, but now it's Episode 6, it feels like a topic um, I need to get hold of. Um, so today I'm going to talk about um, an introduction to blockchain, although I will caveat the fact that I am certainly not an expert. Um, this is what I have read up and what I have learnt over the last 6-12 to 12 months. Um, I'll then talk about some of the implications uh, for blockchain because um, in my very first episode I talked about radical transparency. Um, and you'll have heard me in episode 3 talk about how radical transparency around social media um, and around kind of the future of organisations um, was changing the way that organisations need to behave and be more distributed. Well blockchain very similarly um, is about a more distributed world, a more kind of uh, a free world uh, where it's decentralised. So I'm going to talk about that, what the implications on bigger organisations, particularly things like banks um, that have pretty much controlled uh, the financial systems of the world till today. Um, then I'll talk about a few use cases and then finally I'll go on to talk about what might the future of blockchain be. Okay, so um, I'm going to try and give you in my own words as much as possible in layman's terms uh, what I believe blockchain to be. So a lot of people talk about Bitcoin, um, which is one of the cryptocurrencies um, that has been created. In fact, the biggest cryptocurrency uh, that exists using blockchain technology, which is worth about $40 billion today. Um, but Bitcoin is an application of blockchain. Uh, the actual technology is called blockchain um, and the reason it's called blockchain is because there are chains of blocks uh, they're all created together so essentially um, a transaction that is created um, within the blockchain world um, is essentially when a network of computers which are called nodes are created and connected together to verify a given transaction. So essentially this network of computers at regular intervals will confirm that data that's entered into a ledger, uh, much like a ledger that has been used for many thousands of years um, to write down a specific uh, kind of piece of data, to verify that that data is true. Uh, and that exists in multiple locations on each of these computers and it exists in a chronological order. So that means that there is always a trace, there is always a way of verifying from A to B that that transaction was created and, and the entirety of the blockchain, the entirety of the network of computers validate across that transaction that it is real and it is true. So a currency, whether it's a normal currency or a cryptocurrency, which is the terminology used in the blockchain, is essentially a data entry in a database or a ledger that cannot be changed or kind of uh, adapted unless certain conditions are met. Uh, so those conditions uh, may be conditions that the bank verifies someone's identity um, or that a particular kind of card or check is validated by the use of a code that exists on that check or that piece of uh, kind of currency. And in actual fact, cryptocurrency is no different, um, but it is virtual. It's created through cryptography, uh, which is essentially um, some advanced mathematical principles that are all based around kind of keychains um, and encryption, often encryption that is exceptionally complicated um, and obviously created uh, by artificial intelligence, by computers, and therefore very difficult for kind of people to actually follow or for humans to actually hack. Now, it doesn't mean that it's completely unhackable, but blockchain is in principle kind of much more difficult to forge um, and is a higher level of verification than you can ever get uh, by a human doing it. So it might be helpful at this stage to try and explain this by applying it to currencies that we know and um, we trust and that we've used uh, for many years. So whether that be a cheque or a note, in essence, uh, a cheque or a note um, has an identifier on it. It has a code that the bank, a central organisation, um, has validated is a real kind of uh, piece of information. And then obviously we sign a cheque. Uh, we put our signature on it. Now, of course, that can be forged. Um, it's much easier to forge that than it would be um, in principle to forge um, one of the crypt crypto currencies that have this complex kind of mathematical principle sitting behind it. So essentially, cryptocurrencies are very similar to the currencies that we've known. But of course, um, many people find it a very confusing space because it's technology-led, um, and whether it's Bitcoin or Ethereum or blockchain or cryptocurrency, the terms are quite difficult to access. 
but maybe think back to the origination of the World Wide Web, which has now been around for 27 years since Tim Berners-Lee kind of first invented it. At the beginning, um, we were all very confused. I remember being at university and having to write down um, in notebooks uh, kind of different kind of URLs that you had to put in. Some of them were numbers, very few of them had www at the beginning of them. So it was a very complicated way to access information. It was a very slow way of accessing information. And the first iteration um, of the application of blockchain, which is called Bitcoin, um, is actually now even looked at as uh, a kind of very slow version, a very uh, unadaptable version of Bitcoin. Um, so it's worth thinking about kind of we're at a very, very nascent stage of this right now. So just like the World Wide Web, just like the first feature phone before we got smartphones, uh, this technology will grow and develop and become more applied to everything we do. Um, and there are very many MIT professors that uh, would predict that blockchain will change everything. It will change every industry and it will create digital virtual currencies that mean that we may well have cashless societies um, and no longer need notes and checks because if everything can be validated without a central organisation like a bank, uh, then in fact we do not need that kind of paper currency that we have grown up with. But think about it very similarly to that. So cryptocurrency, just to give you one last kind of um, view of it, is essentially um, a currency that is created through crypto cryptography, sorry, um, and it essentially is encrypted every time a transaction happens within blockchain that is verified, and it's only created as a blockchain once it's verified, creates what's called a token. And the only people that can create a token are called miners, uh, the miners of blockchain. And once that token is created, uh, that means that a cryptocurrency has been created um, and tokens are collected and tokens are essentially alongside the ledger that captures the, the transaction across many computer nodes. Those two things are the two core kind of aspects of what run uh, kind of the blockchain world. So what are the implications of blockchain? Uh, well, they should be very positive for most businesses because they will reduce the cost of networking. Uh, they'll reduce the cost of verification around identification um, for banks. I mean, if you think about uh, any time you need to kind of open a mortgage or you need to open a new savings account, you need to go through many different iterations of proving your identity and your address. In principle, in the blockchain world, that can be automated. Um, it will also uh, kind of potentially threaten many of the banks because the banks have been the central organisations that have ultimately kind of managed the network of currencies until uh, today. And arguably this means that those banks no longer have that control. So unless banks move with this uh, kind of new iteration of technology, they may well find themselves being disrupted. And that may well be why many of the kind of big uh, kind of bosses of uh, financial organisations across the world have been very dismissive um, of blockchain until today. Well, in fact, many are still dismissive of it even today. Um, and you'll see that it's a very kind of volatile marketplace at the moment. You'll have seen, and probably everyone knows a friend that has uh, kind of bought some Bitcoin or Ethereum and has seen them kind of go through the roof, skyrocket in terms of the value, and then crash, and then skyrocket, and then crash. Um, I guess that is uh, kind of behaviour of something very nascent and very new um, because let's face it, the vast majority of us, I would say me included, um, are only just getting to grips with what blockchain actually means. But the implications are essentially that you do not need that centralised organisation. It means that things can be decentralised. Any business in principle can connect to the blockchain without having to use a central bank or a central insurer um, in the future. And that also means that potentially there's no need for kind of established kind of institutions to regulate things. You may have noticed that Mark Zuckerberg in one of his speeches last week around Facebook suggested that actually regulation by the US government um, was not the way forward for a business like his. He suggested that in actual fact blockchain could be the best way to regulate that data is being collected and stored and used in the right way. Now clearly uh, one may be a little uh, kind of suspicious of that given the Cambridge Analytica story and the fact that they got caught out uh, having had that data for two years. And if you're interested in my view on Facebook, um, look below and you'll see uh, kind of one of my episodes was very much about the Facebook uh, kind of proposition and the fact that I believe that arguably it's the new tobacco company of today. 
So let's talk about a few of the use cases uh, for blockchain beyond kind of just uh, cryptocurrencies and collecting Bitcoin as an investment uh, pro proposition. So firstly, I touched on one, which was cashless society, the fact that currency can be virtual and digital and therefore we don't need notes. So any organisation could in principle create their own currency. Um, and some young organisations are actually looking at doing that right now. Uh, the second is micropayments. So imagine when I read articles on an online content provider, rather than having to pay a subscription fee, I could just pay for each of the individual articles and the blockchain would validate which articles that I've read and then take payments specific specifically for those. Uh, the same in principle could be uh, for micro work where people kind of fill in contracts uh, or they potentially validate things on the internet remotely. Uh, people could be paid that way rather than being paid a fixed salary at the end of the month through PAYE. Um, you've then got something like uh, kind of online voting. Um, in principle, the ability to validate that someone is who they say they are and to avoid fraud within voting uh, could be another application um, of blockchain technology. Auto confirming identification process, whether it's doing a visa, which takes months, uh, that could be validated and done significantly quicker through blockchain. Um, and having just gone through that with my uh, other half, um, I can tell you that that would be a huge step forward. Um, equally kind of validating for around a mortgage or validating around opening a current account. All of those things could be accelerated significantly if you have blockchain verifying uh, kind of someone's identification. And the last aspect, which I think is very interesting for the marketing and advertising industry, which I'll deep dive on for a second, um, is smart contracts. So contracts essentially between two parties can auto execute without having to go through legal departments, without having to go through multiple signatures being faxed back and forth, emailed back and forth. In principle, they can start as soon as conditions are kind of met and they can be seen that within the network that they are validated. So many of you um, will work in the same industry that I've worked in today, which is advertising. Um, and I want to just talk about how blockchain can improve advertising. So firstly, if you think about the digital value chain, there's lots of concern around who's being paid what, uh, is an ad truly viewed. In principle, blockchain can affect both of those. It can create transparency um, and visibility uh, through the digital value chain to show who is taking what um, and therefore kind of validate whether all of the players in the ecosystem are taking the right value out. Um, it can validate and Brave, which is a network using blockchain very uh, early already, validates whether an ad has been viewed, whether it's been on a page for a certain amount of time. So um, all of those things can be validated and you, that does bring radical transparency. Smart contracts, as I mentioned a second ago, can essentially allow a new inventory source to come online very quickly because the blockchain can validate whether that uh, contract is, is one that they feel is uh, verified and, and kind of therefore can go forward. And it will also allow for um, kind of arbitrage to be identified uh, where that is happening because ultimately blockchain will spot um, kind of an identify who is doing what within the whole of that value chain by the network sending back signals uh, to and fro. Um, and of course that hopefully should also mean that kind of digital becomes more cost effective for brands um, because it will identify where potential kind of arbitrage or markup may exist uh, within that kind of ecosystem. And there's actually some really interesting players already innovating in this space. So the Truth Agency from the marketing group uh, run by Mary Keen Dawson um, has been one of the first agencies to launch a blockchain uh, kind of campaign with The Guardian. Um, and you can go and read about that, um, which is very progressive. So congratulations to them. And secondly, a business uh, that's coming out of Russia um, has designed uh, an ecosystem um, all around kind of improving uh, the kind of value chain within digital. They don't, they are not designed to kind of disrupt any particular part of it, agencies, DSPs, publishers. They're trying to improve the whole ecosystem. And that business is called Papyrus. It's a business actually uh, I'm going to be advising for. So that's one of the ways that I'm trying to understand blockchain in my own, in my own head. And they're essentially off of it, it, kind of Ethereum trying to build multiple layers um, and their own cryptocurrency that validates uh, kind of advertising because one of the only challenges with advertising and programmatic in particular is that the volume of tra transactions and the real-time nature of programmatic mean that Bitcoin for instance just simply couldn't handle uh, the volume and velocity of data that would be kind of pushing around the network nodes. 
So you can probably tell by now that I am very much a positive advocate for blockchain. Um, I think it will create a fairer world. I think it will create a world where there is more trust. Um, and I think it will create a world where organisations are forced to look at themselves um, and consider whether they're truly doing the right thing uh, for customers, whether they're truly charging the right amount uh, to customers. Um, so if we can have um, a system that improves the world and makes the world a better place, uh, why wouldn't that be a good thing? Please remember, if you're cynic, uh, that it's still very early days. The web is nearly 30 years old, and yet blockchain is just a few years old. Um, and of course, there will always be certain people that try to exploit it. Um, but just like the World Wide Web, uh, predominantly uh, it's kind of invention and development and creation, and blockchain will continue to evolve and change over the next two, three, five, ten years has been a very positive thing and I very much am a believer that blockchain will improve things and make us uh, kind of live um, in a more distributed, more decentralised world um, and one where we have the ability to work um, in a more remote sense um, as I talked about um, in episode three um, around the future of work. So it will even potentially create whole new digital platforms. Part of the Ferrari around Facebook right now and the way that they've been using and kind of exploiting data, that could completely change in the blockchain world where actually blockchain would verify that data, personal data is being used in the right way, in a trustworthy way uh, within a network. So imagine how the Facebook of tomorrow might look if we had blockchain uh, already in existence. So I would encourage you to go and read up on it, look up on it, uh, find a bit more information out. Uh, the kind of more progressive uh, kind of cryptocurrency is Ethereum because you can build applications around it, but I'm sure there will be many more uh, that come to market. And remember that you don't need to necessarily understand the ins and outs of technology. You just need to understand what it allows, what it enables, and what could be possible as a result of having this kind of technology. Okay, so that's it for today. Um, thanks for tuning in as always. Um, if you liked it and you found it interesting, then please give me a thumbs up below. Um, and please, I'd love it if you give me some comments because I need some more feedback to know what I should do differently, whether you found that interesting, if there's anything else I should focus on. Um, and please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, you can click on the link just here and you can find out from some of my other videos um, other aspects of where I believe the future will change as a result of technology. So great to see you as always and uh, see you soon.